Where are SpaceX's limits? Well, this is the question even the company's founder, Elon Musk, I guess, won't be able to answer. Because he and SpaceX always create breakthroughs time and time again that make rocket enthusiasts like us overwhelmed. From the Falcon rocket line to the world's largest and most powerful rocket starship, from exclusive reuse methods to operational approaches that we've only seen in sci-fi movies. So, what's next? Don't wait any longer. Let's get into it right now in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Starship is already the world's largest rocket, standing at a height of 121 meters. The rocket gives us a majestic sense, resembling a skyscraper made up of 40 stacked African elements. However, for Elon Musk, that's still not enough. He has even greater ambitions for his darling. We've got a version 3 ship design that'll stretch even taller, probably end up being, I don't know, 140 meters before it's all said and done. Maybe 150 meters at the end in length. So yeah, be even taller than it is currently. With a height of 150 meters, V3 will be 25% taller than V1. Based on previous speculation, version 2 is expected to be extended by 10% to reach 132 meters in a fully stacked configuration, meaning V3 will be about 20 meters taller than V2. Honestly, Elon Musk or SpaceX hasn't provided an in-depth analysis of these two newly announced Starship generations. However, with completely new names assigned, significant changes may be anticipated. Some potential changes could involve the implementation of new types of domes, possibly leading to modifications in the size of the domes at the front and rear optimizing space for fuel storage or increasing the capacity of the payload bay. In terms of payload capacity, the new version of Starship will increase its lift capability from about 100 tons to over 200 tons per flight, according to Musk. To grasp the scale of this achievement, one can imagine that the cargo capacity of Starship is equivalent to the payload capacity of three Saturn V rockets, which weighed 118 tons into orbit and about 12 times that of a space shuttle. In terms of fuel, an extended version of Starship may also increase the fuel storage capacity. Essentially, the advantage of scaling up a rocket lies in the favorable relationships between the weight of an empty rocket and the volume of fuel it can carry. As the rocket size increases, the volume of the fuel tanks can grow significantly without a proportional increase in empty weight. We're talking about Starship Stage 2, but to maintain this ratio, the Super Heavy also needs to have a greater height. This allows for more efficient fuel utilization. Additionally, playing with engine size and optimizing the thrust-to-fuel consumption ratio contributes to these benefits. By increasing the number of engines, you can achieve a better balance, making it more efficient to lift heavier payloads. For instance, if one engine can lift 100 pounds of payload, three engines working together can lift more than 300 pounds. This is because multiple engines can be tuned to work in concert more effectively than a single engine alone maximizing the overall efficiency of the launch. That's why both Starship V2 and V3 will see an increase in the number of Raptor engines, coupled with progressively more powerful variants of the Raptor engine. As of now, the Raptor V3 engine for Starship's V2 is SpaceX's latest version, producing a thrust of approximately 269 tons, representing an 18% improvement in power compared to the Raptor 2 engine. Surely, next, they'll research and produce Raptor V4 for Starship V3, and it's hard to believe just how much more powerful it could become. The decision to scale up and enhance the capabilities of SpaceX and Elon Musk for the Starship rocket is truly an ongoing effort. This is certainly not beyond SpaceX's capabilities, as some might think. This remarkable example of successful scaling up is evident in the transition from the Falcon 1 to the Falcon 9. While the Falcon 9 boasts a more efficient upper stage, this improvement alone doesn't fully account for the substantial performance leap from its predecessor. The Falcon 9 is only 8.26 times heavier than the Falcon 1, yet it can carry a payload that is 20 times heavier with only 10 times the thrust. Although it benefits from a more efficient upper stage engine, the Falcon 9 stands as a testament to the advantages of scaling up rocket technology. Much of the design architecture from the Falcon 1 was systematically modified and enhanced for the Falcon 9. Furthermore, the benefits of scaling up continue with the Falcon 9's V1.1 upgrade. The propellant mass fraction sees improvement and the payload capacity increases by 53%, while the gross mass sees only a 51% jump.
Some of this improvement can be attributed to a higher specific impulse ISP, but having more thrust per square meter of frontal area certainly contributes. In essence, the Falcon 9 becomes more efficient both in terms of cost per kilogram and payload mass fraction as it grows in size. Therefore, the possibility of the already giant Starship becoming even larger is a story that SpaceX is undoubtedly capable of realizing. While it's still unclear whether it'll become orbital refueling stations holding hundreds of tons of propellant or a vehicle transporting thousands of people and goods to the moon and Mars, an extended Starship will bring numerous advantages to SpaceX's and Elon Musk's ambitions more than ever before. And to meet such large-scale prototypes, a simple high bay and a few tents will no longer be suitable. Concerns about foreign objects causing damage during rocket production are a real issue, potentially leading to the elimination of prototypes. That's why SpaceX is expanding its starbase, with SpaceX COO Gwynne Shotwell stating that the factory will be capable of producing a new starship every 72 hours. SpaceX is already working on a massive star factory production facility to increase starship production, meaning that once it's fully up and running, SpaceX can immediately begin mass production of Starship V3. Continuous developments and upgrades are necessary for an unprecedented program like Starship. SpaceX is also constructing a second Starship launch pad at Starbase in South Texas. We're going to be launching a lot, and we're going to be upgrading one tower while we're launching from another tower, so two towers is important, Musk said. For Artemis missions, SpaceX will likely need to fly Starships nearly as often as they're launching Falcon 9 rockets, multiple times per week, to aggregate methane and liquid oxygen propellants into a storage depot in Earth orbit. Then, the human-rated Starship lander will launch into low Earth orbit, link up with the depot, and receive its full propellant load to head for the moon. NASA's astronaut crews will depart Earth on NASA's Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft, then link up with a Starship lander in orbit around the moon. Starship will ferry two of the four-person Artemis crew from Orion to the lunar surface, then back to Orion for the ride home. In summary, during the next period, Starship only needs to perform well in its third flight, which includes achieving orbit and demonstrating the ability to transfer fuel within the Starship tanks. This would be a technical leap similar to Portugal's Caravel, not to say the applications will be identical. But if successful, it will not only open up the possibility of closer access to our solar system than ever before, but also offer much more. Only time will tell, but it's bound to happen. The entire process of developing planning space missions will be revolutionized as the cost of space utilization decreases by a factor of 100. In fact, the entire concept of how we think about space exploration will have to change. SpaceX will not be alone in providing this service. Other players will attempt to join in, either to get a piece of the pie or because they require different solutions, different types of fuel, different functionalities of Starship Phase 2. However, if SpaceX plays its cars right, they can maintain a monopoly on the launch and capture system for centuries, generating tons of money for the expanding space industry. When the Starship's second launch has faded into the past, all SpaceX needs to do is forge ahead. By 2024, the anticipation builds for the next five Starship launches. What's truly exciting is that Starship's maiden payload to orbit will be part of this upcoming fleet. If successful, this will mark the beginning of a new era for a revolutionary transport vehicle capable of dominating the global orbital payload market. So, what is Starship's first payload to orbit? How Starship gradually reshaping the launch market? 2023 is coming to an end, and it's time to recap what has been achieved and outline new plans for the future. In early December, Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, tweeted, SpaceX is tracking to launch over 80% of all Earth payload to orbit this year, accompanied by a chart showing that SpaceX is on track to put 1,600 tons of payload into orbit, representing 80% of the world's space cargo while the rest of the world will only transport about 400 tons, and that's mainly from China. This is truly a commendable feat for SpaceX as they have exceeded their expectations and maintained their leading position in the aerospace industry. It's also important to note that these calculations do not include the payload capacity of Starship, as SpaceX has not yet launched it into orbit. However, to be honest, Starship will soon succeed and likely replace everything that Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy concurrently do, if not more. 
it's not an exaggeration to say that with Starship in the future, SpaceX will be a dominant force in the global aerospace industry, handling all cargo and human transportation flights with massive payloads and quantities. Although it has never flown into orbit, Starship has had valuable contracts to carry the first satellites. In 2022, Japanese satellite operator SkyPerfect JSAT announced that it selected SpaceX's Starship rocket to launch its Superbird 9 satellite into a GTO as early as 2027. It isn't the first time that SpaceX or another company has floated the possibility of using Starship to launch paying customer satellites, but SkyPerfect JSAT appears to have become the first customer to sign a firm contract to do so. In March 2022, an executive of mobile-friendly internet constellation startup AST Space Mobile said that it had secured two launch contracts from SpaceX for its operational Bluebird satellites, but it only firmly selected Falcon 9 for one. In 2019, SpaceX President and COO Gwen Shotwell suggested that Starship could be used to launch Turkey's second domestically built communications satellite, although her offhand mention has yet to translate into any official agreement. In 2021, SpaceX bid Starship to launch NASA's tiny Tropics weather satellite constellation, amounting to just 56 kilograms for a price somewhere between $9 million and $20 million. Starship doesn't have any space flights under its belt yet, but SpaceX is working to change that. The company's gearing up for the third test mission of the Starship vehicle next year. Perhaps after the third flight, we'll witness the inaugural payload-carrying missions. Besides satellite contracts, one cannot overlook human spaceflight missions, including the prospect of returning to the moon. After proving its reliability, the giant spacecraft will begin undertaking crewed missions. Since 2018, the Dear Moon Project, an ambitious plan for a lunar flyby no earlier in 2023, has been announced. The ARP Project and Lunar Tourism Mission were conceived and sponsored by Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maozawa it will utilize SpaceX's Starship for a private orbital space flight around the moon. For this mission, Starship will only need to carry nine people, although its capacity could be many times that of a six-day lunar circumnavigation. Besides, there is the Polaris Project, the third mission organized by commercial astronaut Jared Isaacman, which will use Starship as their spacecraft for space travel. And when talking about lunar exploration, we certainly can't ignore NASA's Artemis III mission, with a variant of Starship HLS set to land humans on the lunar surface in 2025. The next goal, much farther than landing on the moon, it will be a journey to Mars. Until now, both the public and those involved in space travel have envisioned this as the exploration of a few astronauts on a cramped spacecraft. However, for Starship, it will enable explorations akin to those familiar in space imaginations. Although SpaceX currently has no commercial contracts for Mars missions, the successful execution of lunar missions by Starship will undoubtedly pave the way for Mars exploration. Starship flights carrying the first humans to Mars are optimally planned for the Mars launch window after the launch of the first two or more uncrewed Starship vehicles. Therefore, upon human arrival to Mars, there will already be at least two cargo Starships on the surface. The second wave of missions can include two starships carrying crew plus additional uncrewed cargo starships. The human starships will have an order of 1,100 cubic meters forward space, most of which will be pressurized for a human habitation, a 20, 30, an 800 cubic meter LOX tank, and a 600 cubic meter methane tank with a stainless steel primary architecture. The LOX and methane tanks could later become pressurized, living space on the surface of Mars. We recommend that these first crewed starships have at least about 10 to 20 total people on board with an additional 100 metric tons of available cargo mass per starship. Cargo carried on these flights will necessarily include additional equipment required for human health and productivity during the transit to Mars and on the Martian surface. These vehicles will also carry fully operational hardware needed to support the human Mars base, which is likely to include equipment for power production, water extraction, pre-prepared landing pads, radiation shielding, dust control equipment, and exterior shields for humans and equipment. Humans will likely live on Starship for the first few years on Mars until additional habitats are constructed, so the radiation risk must be assessed and mitigated accordingly and equipment planned to support this initial infrastructure. The first wave of uncrewed Starship vehicles can also be relocated or repurposed as needed to support the people on the surface. These vehicles will be valuable assets for storage, habitation, and as a source of refined metals and components. 
Not only that Starship is currently regarded as a major factor that could change the entire global launch market. Starship has a standardized payload capacity, helping to reduce costs across most transport segments. With a 150-ton payload to orbit at a million dollars a launch, Musk has suggested that Starship could deliver payloads to orbit for as little as $10 a kilogram, depending on the vehicle's flight rate and how much of the savings SpaceX passes on to customers. In comparison, SpaceX's Starship, with full reusability, could potentially be priced similarly to SpaceX's Falcon at around $67 million initially. But with a higher launch rate, the cost would decrease even further. It has the potential to launch more payloads and more crew members at a lower price than any other launch vehicle that has ever existed, said Laura Forzik, executive director of the space industry consulting firm Astrolytical. Furthermore, with its 9-meter-wide fairings and virtually unlimited payload capacity, handling large and cumbersome satellite designs will no longer be a challenge. Historically, almost every application in space has been constrained by something commonly known as SWAP size, weight, and power. Satellite bus manufacturers have been forced to use expensive, lightweight components that are specifically designed for spacecraft that need to fit inside current rockets. A perfect example of this is the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST. In order to fit the required mission capabilities within swap constraints, the designers of JWST had to develop a highly complex deployable segmented mirror to fit within the volume budget. Use expensive and novel beryllium mirrors to fit within the mass budget and design lower power instruments and thermal conditioning hardware to fit within the power budget. This kind of complexity dramatically increases the cost of missions. In a world with Starship, things will become significantly simpler. Instead of a complex, unfolding, segmented mirror, you could use a large monolithic mirror. Instead of expensive beryllium mirrors, you could use simpler and cheaper materials with lower stiffness-to-mass ratios, similar to those used in ground-based telescopes. Instead of expensive, power-optimized instruments, additional power could be used to make simpler and cheaper instruments with more robust thermal conditioning capabilities. The potential for change exists across every type of mission in space. It will become possible to have a satellite bus platform that has more power, more payload volume, and more payload mass but one that comes in at the cost of a small satellite. In a world with launch vehicles like Starship, satellite-based communications providers will be able to use the increased power to have greater throughput, remote sensing players will be able to use more volume to have larger apertures, and national security missions will no longer need to make the trade-offs between single exquisite satellites and constellations of low-capability small satellites. And that's it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.